Hey, hello everyone. It's Don Bain, the Gadget Professor. I got a cool episode for you tonight. We got a, a gadget that's actually sitting on my laptop staring at me. It's right there. It's a webcam and it's pretty cool. And we also have a, a rant of the day, which is about my most unfavored company. And unfortunately, I'm still with them. But uh, you want to stay tuned to hear this one. Catch you in a minute. He's got the toys. He's got showmanship. And he's got sex appeal. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from the great Southwest, here's the guru of gadgets, the dapper and dashing Don Bain, the Gadget Professor. Gadget Professor. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Gadget Professor Show. My name is Don Bain, and, of course, I am the Gadget Professor coming to you live and absolutely in color from our Scottsdale, Arizona studio. I finally uh, plowed my way back into the studio. It's been pretty crazy here, but uh, it feels good to get behind the, uh, the old desk here, and uh, I feel right at home like I should. So uh, we have a cool episode today. We are on episode 191. If you're new to the Gadget Professor, welcome. If you're old, uh, welcome back. It's easy to watch The Gadget Professor because you're watching me. Uh, we're on iTunes. We're on the Roku Box. We have our own channel on the Roku Box. Uh, we're on the Tech Podcast Network. And probably the easiest way or one of the easiest ways to catch The Gadget Professor is to just go to our website, and that would be www.thegadgetprofessor.com. And uh, every week we have a brand new episode every Thursday, and uh, we got little pictures there now since we updated the website, and it shows you what's going on. And then on the right-hand side here, you'll see important pages, and right there, newsletter, if you click that, you will get the newsletter free, no charge. There's no charge for anything that we do, actually. Uh, but you'll get it free every Thursday evening as soon as the episode is posted, and it will be posted sometimes between 7 and, let's say, 11 o'clock Arizona time. We don't change our clocks. Uh, but as soon as the episode up is up, you will get it. And uh, the reason you want the show notes, of course, is because we have all the URLs, everything that we talked about, nice and neat. They're highlighted, and uh, they're hot links, so you just click it, and it takes you right to the news article or the uh, information that we were talking about. So you definitely want to get uh, the show notes. We're also on uh, Facebook. You can check us out at Facebook. It's uh, Facebook forward slash The Gadget Professor. I've been posting a lot of photos from CES, and uh, I do want to call your attention. It's both on my web page and on my Facebook page, but I have a really cool uh, time-lapse video. It's on the it's on the. Uh, uh, Facebook page and again my web page but uh, it's a really cool time-lapse video that I took when I was at CES using the Brino uh, time-lapse camera we're gonna have those folks on here in a couple weeks but uh, that came out really well and it's a lot of fun uh, if I get a chance I'm gonna put some music to it uh, also uh, you can follow us uh, on Rebel Mouse uh, and uh, basically it's just like following us at on Twitter which would be at gadget professor at gadget professor and basically what the, what the Twitter account does, uh, Twitter feed does, is it uh, not only tweets, but it gives you a pictorial of everything that we talk about. And I tweet a couple, couple hundred times a day at this point, and there's some really cool stuff. This page is very dynamic on the Rebel Mouse page because it uh, changes constantly as we tweet, and it actually puts a pictorial against the, the tweet that we twat. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, also, you can email me anytime, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, at thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com, thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com. I'd be more than happy to write back a letter, uh, an email as soon as I can. S some person wrote me an email. I'm embarrassed to tell you about two or three weeks ago, and it was a long email, and it was very nicely worded and very well thought out. I have not responded, and my excuse is I was at CES. I was sick for a week after that, but uh, I'm going to dig that email out probably tonight and respond. So I do respond to all the email, and if you want a quick question and answer, just throw it up on Facebook, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So uh, let's start off today uh, by uh, not going into any hacking news. Uh, it's not that I'm dropping that feature. I just don't want to overdo it. And there's a lot of things that have been hacked, man. But uh, let's move on. Uh, I found a cool gadget. I have to tell you, it's not a biggie, but it's a cool gadget. Uh, I found a couple of them, actually, when I was at CES that, that um, I have to be honest, they were free. Uh, they were given to me. So uh, the first one that I got was, uh, we'll take a close-up of this if we can on camera two. So here we are uh, on camera two, and you can see it's, it's one cord, but there's three wires coming off it. 
actually three connectors. So that's just a standard USB. And then we have three pins here. And uh, essentially what we have here on the three pins is uh, one is the old type uh, iPhone connector, like for an iPhone 5 or before that. Uh, the second connector is your typical droid connector. And your last connector is uh, for a brand new iPhone 6 uh, connector and a lightning cable. So basically you plug this into the USB, into your charger, probably your charger. You don't want to use your computer because I don't think it has enough amps to charge the, th the device quickly. We'll get into that later. But uh, really cool, one wire, uh, and you can charge three devices or you're never at a loss for the right cable. I love this. It doesn't work. Uh, I got this from a company. I don't want to badger them because I like the company, but I'll give you a hint. It was a free giveaway, and uh, the first two letters are C, N, and the last letter is T. You can figure it out, but it didn't work, and uh, I'm annoyed because I like the idea. Okay, that said, uh, we came up with another one. This was sent to me, attention gadget professor at my office, and uh, no return address, uh, no name, nothing, not nothing. I have no idea who sent this to me, and to make matters even more insane, there's no brand name on this, but it's really cool, and it does work. So uh, basically, this is what it looks like, and it can fit in your pocket pretty simple. But uh, this is a cool gadget. Uh, there are four connectors inside. We'll get a close-up on camera, too, in a minute. But there's basically four uh, wires on this, cables, if you will. Uh, and then on the side here, uh, there's the four, four cables that you could see. And then on the side here there's an actual switch that you can switch. So one's going to go into the uh, USB, which would be this wire. And then again, you have the three, the three variable types of connectors, the uh, lightning connector, the old iPhone connector, and the what I call the droid connector. And then you have a little switch to switch which one you want. Well, we'll get a close-up of that on camera, too, if we can. There it is there. And you can see the switch. And uh, this one does work, and uh, it's pretty convenient. And I just throw it in my briefcase, and... Uh, pretty happy with it. I wish I knew who made it, because uh, I don't. But whoever sent it to me, thank you. It's a great device. I don't know what it costs. I don't know where you get it, but uh, it was fun, and I like it. Now, uh, last but not least, uh, this is the winner of them all. Uh, here it is. Uh, here, here's the cable, and uh, we'll take a close-up of this on camera, too. We'll do two close-ups. So that, that's what it is. It's just a cable. And uh, there's two different ends. One is the USB end here. And this end, if you look at it close on camera too, you'll see that it's no big deal. It's a lightning connector. But what's neat about this is if you pull this apart, which I've just done, that flops down. And now it's a droid connector, if you will. So you have two connectors in here. And uh, basically, you just slide that back in its case. This is a very cool connector. It's very well made. And this is actually... Uh, called the Magic Cable Duo, and this is put out by a company called My Energy, and I'll have this in the show notes, but uh, this, uh, this is a very cool cable, and it works real well, and I'm real pleased with it, so uh, those are quick, easy gadgets, uh, and if you're looking, always fumbling around, or you have a charger that doesn't have the cable connected to it, uh, those devices are terrific to have, and they're light, and they're very inexpensive. Now, let's get into some free apps. I got a lot of... Uh, Good, good emails last week and compliments on the uh, apps that we had, so I'm glad everybody liked them. Uh, this week I kind of mixed it up a little bit. Uh, this is called Email Stripper. Again, I don't make this stuff up. That's what it's called. But did you ever get an email that's tons of jokes? And by the way, don't send me jokes. I, I hate getting jokes from, from people. Uh, I don't know why. I don't, I, I don't read them. I don't like them. I delete them. But a lot of people send them out. And uh, this is called Email Stripper. Uh, this cleans forwarded emails to make them easier to read. So if you've ever gotten an email that has all the hyperlinks and all the commas and hex signs and all that stuff and it's sloppy, uh, you can run it through this free software called Email Stripper, and it cleans it up and makes it look real professional. So uh, check that out. It's got a 7.4 uh, rating, which is pretty high, and uh, basically uh, it works. It works. So if you like to send out reams of jokes, uh, you might want to make them look professional and clean them up with, with that. Now, uh, next case in point. Uh, I had a good friend of mine, and the only reason I, I, I did this is because the person was a good friend of mine, but her kids 
got on her desktop and were doing what kids do. Uh, they play games and they download games and they play their games and they work. And uh, this particular child who's uh, about 11 uh, got on the only computer in the home, which is a desktop, which they use for uh, all kinds of things, uh, not only Google searches, but to do their finances, so on and so forth. So uh, she was freaking out because every time she turned on her computer and tried to go to Google or anything, uh, she never got where she was going. There was a zillion pop-ups, and you know the drill. She was infected, and uh, she is not that good with computers. So uh, I felt really bad for her because she was in a panic, and she was in the middle of doing her taxes, so all her financial data was on the computer, and then her kid went in and downloaded uh, a game, which was free. But what you don't realize, what a lot of people don't realize, is it's not that the games are free and not that the games don't work, but as you're downloading that, you are downloading a plethora of viruses, malware, keyloggers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's exactly what happened to this poor lady. So uh, I, I, I hate working on other people's computers unless they're really good friends. Uh, but I felt bad, so I said, I'll, I'll help you fix it. So uh, then I thought, you know what? I really don't have the time to do this today. So uh, the first line of defense for me, knowing that she had spyware, malware, and all other kinds of junk is, of course, the Fix Me Stick. And that's so easy to run. So I gave her the Fix Me Stick, and I said, run it two times. Because what happens is there's layered, what's called layered viruses or malware or whatever you want to call it. But Fix Me Stick will find the first layer, and if you haven't, been familiar or don't understand what Fix Me Stick is, Google it. We'll have the people in from Fix Me Stick in a couple weeks. They got a new device out that I want to show everybody. But in any event, the Fix Me Stick turns your computer off. It downloads all the latest virus databases that are out there, all the new viruses, and it loads it on the stick, and you walk away. It puts the machine into the Linux mode, all run on this uh, flash drive, and it will clean it off. So uh, three hours later, she called me and said that there were more viruses on the machine than she could count. And I said, remove them all, delete them. And she just clicked, clicked delete. And then I said, do it again. Because what happens is it finds the first layer of viruses. And sometimes uh, if after you remove the first one, the second and third and fourth one show up. So it is possible, although not usual, but given what she had, uh, there was no question that she had to run it twice. So she ran it the second time, and instead of finding thousands, she only found six or seven, and she deleted that, and she went back in her computer, and lo and behold, uh, she still had the same problem. So I decided to help her out. She dropped the computer off in the morning, and I'm looking through the machine, and I knew instantly what it was. It's called uh, a hijack. Uh, her browser was basically hijacked. And what I mean by that is when you have a landing page, a home page on your browser, mine happens to be Google, yours could be uh, uh, Yahoo, it could be uh, AOL, whatever it is. Uh, when you download those games, it hijacks your home page and puts what it wants on there. It also puts on a bunch of pop-up ads and it, it's insanity and people panic and don't know what to do. And uh, it's not an easy thing to fix. So I know from experience that the simplest way to fix that problem, if you had a home page and it was set for Google, basically you're going to go into settings and uh, you're going to go into uh, general uh, and you'll find it says manage search engines and right here you'll see I have Google for my search engine but if I click here it actually says manage search engines and you'll see all the ones that you didn't want if you were hacked. but. Mine happens to be Google, and I want it that way. So this software, this malware that you load, essentially hijacks it, and uh, that's kind of the end of it. So that's that's not a good thing. So uh, right off the bat, to help yourself out, uh, you can go into that settings th th uh, area, and you'll see the illegal browser that was put on there. It could be called Ad Hoc or wh whatever it is. You'll see the name, and it's not Google or it's not AOL. Just cancel that out, rewrite what you want, click save, and you're back in business. For pop-ups, I recommend, and I'm using it right on my machine now, I use Adblocker Plus. Uh, it's available for all the browsers. It's available for Chrome. It's available for uh, uh, Mozilla, and it's free, and that will stop all those pop-up ads from coming. Now, as soon as I went on to her machine, I noticed a program called Hamachi. And if you're not familiar with Hamachi, it's definitely a legal program and it's definitely free. But essentially what it does is it connects your machine to everybody else who was on your network. And yes, there are a ton of people who play games and use Hamachi. 
as the vehicle to play the games with, and that's what the kid was using. But unbeknownst to the child, and it's not his fault, uh, Hamachi also opened it up for everybody else to get in there. So I immediately pulled off Hamachi, and it didn't show up as a virus because it's not. It's not spyware. It's not malware. But I know what it is, and off it went. So the kid was upset that his game was gone, but hey, what can you do? So in any event, her machine was fixed up after two hours of my uh, pulling my hair out of my head because she had a ton of stuff there that weren't necessarily viruses. They were just software that you agreed to put on when the kids said, yes, I want to play this game. They put a ton of stuff on there, and they don't show up as viruses because they're not, but they will take control of your machine. So that brings us to the Browser Protect app, and this is Avoid Browser Hijacks. And essentially what you do is... Uh, this uh, Browse Protect Premium is free. It keeps your browser safe from home page, search providers, and extensions, uh, and other hijack attempts. And uh, basically what it is, it puts an icon on your machine, and here's what it looks like. And then you click scan, and it will tell you all the things that are on your machine that could ter potentially hack your computer. Now, I recognize a lot of these, and I know they're okay. Uh, I use LogMe, and I know that's okay. Uh, there's a couple on here that I don't recognize. Uh, AOL, that's okay. Uh, but there's one here that says Search Babylon, and I know for a fact I don't want that. So it discovered that. And again, it's not a virus. Some software somewhere put Babylon search engine, which I hate, and you'll hate too, because it brings a ton of pop-ups. So at one point in time, that happened, and what I did is I went in just like I showed you before and changed that line under the settings and put back the Google browser, but I never got rid of the Babylon, and this picked it up. So all you have to do is apply actions, and it will take that off, and it will prevent anything else that you may load on there, and it will inadvert that inadvertently loads other things that will either hijack your homepage or start throwing pop-ups. So I hope that that helps a lot of people. Now, talking about hijacking and permissions and things, uh, I don't think people realize, and someday I, I will spend a lot of time, maybe a whole episode, on uh, permissions, and particularly with your smartphones. Uh, almost every single time that you put an app on your smartphone, uh, whether you know it or not, you're saying agree to let your phone uh, the phone hit the location, uh, is, it's okay to let the phone use my microphone, it's okay to let the phone use my camera, and you, you just bam, 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 you want the app and you got it. But what you did is you allowed that company permission, you granted them permission to use the speaker, to use the microphone, to use the camera. And you may not believe this, but I know this for a fact, and I've talked to two companies at CEN, at CES at length about this, including a, a marketing adver advertising agency that actually uses and pays to get that data. So the scenario that one young lady painted for me was that you are home and you have your phone, your smartphone sitting here and you have it resting on the, on the couch while you're watching the game and uh, you're having a conversation or whatever and all of a sudden the microphone turns on. You don't know that the microphone's on, but the microphone is on. And it's recording what you're saying, but it's also recording that you're watching the New England Patriots. I'm not going to get into the Patriots with the deflated balls. We're not going to go there. But that information is then recorded, and then it's sent to their server, and now they know that you're a Patriot fan or that you like to watch football or whatever else you said, and you have no idea that's going on. So you really need to read those things, and you, need, you really need to think twice before you allow permission for someone to access your phone, your camera. I mean... You can use your imagination where that can go. So you got to be careful with that. Now, this particular app is called My Permissions. Protect your information online. Do you know how many apps access your personal information online? Well, if you want to find out, you can just add this app. And what this will do is it will uh, uh, tell you in advance what you're agreeing to and what you're not agreeing to. It's totally free. And uh, there's a little video here. You could run that at your leisure if you're interested in the app. But uh, I would definitely put this on the phone. You will be amazed, amazed at what permissions you grant for, for software that has absolutely nothing to do with video or sound, but yet you've granted them permission. And you've granted them permission to see where you've been because uh, there's a GPS on your phone. And it can just tell them every single place uh, that you've been minute by minute. And... Uh, 
Next week or the week after, I'll show you a little demonstration on your iPhone uh, that you probably have that app turned on. You don't even know, and it's tracking everywhere that, uh, that you've been. We'll take a look at that. Now, here's a, an app. Actually, this is built in in Windows 7 and 8, and the Mac has it built in, but it's basically uh, uh, very similar to a program called Dragon, naturally speaking. And the technology is, is such today that I could just speak into the microphone like I'm doing, or you could speak into the built-in microphone on your laptop, uh, and it will record your voice very simply. And what uh, Dragon, naturally speaking, does is it actually takes the voice as you're talking and turns it into a Word document, and it will it will correct the spelling and, and do the whole bit, and it does it pretty good. The more you use the software, the better the speech recognition is, and there's also uh, sometimes they give you papers to read, like the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog, and it learns your voice. So, again, the more you use it, the more proficient it becomes. But if you don't want to pay for it, it's free. If you go to Vocala, and that would be at vocula.net. It will be in the show notes. There's two versions. Version 2 works with Dragon Naturally Speaking, and it enhances it. And then there's one, Vocula 3, which works with the Windows speech recognition. And uh, that's actually free, and a lot of people don't realize that that's actually uh, on your computer. And the way you access that, uh, I'm not going to get into it now, but I'll just tell you the way it, it tells you here if you go to the web page. But uh, you're going to basically go into uh, the speech recognition portion of your uh, control panel and just click on it, and it's going to ignite that uh, speech recognition program where you could speak into the mic, and uh, it works pretty well. So you might want to check that out. And now what we're going to do is take one brief minute because I do have a, a rant of the day. Uh, Mike didn't want to run the video because he didn't like it, but. The rant of the day is um, with my cell phone company, and I've ranted about them a couple times. And if you watch the Gadget Professor folks, you know I don't rant a lot. But I'm going to rant today, and I'll make it brief. Uh, I do have my phone with Verizon. I have excellent service, and uh, I, I can't complain. However, however, uh, I just switched plans recently. And I went to the Verizon store, and I talked to a, a lovely gentleman who I talk to all the time when I go there. I know the guy now because I'm there so much. And uh, started kind of a new family plan with my daughter and her husband and all that kind of stuff. So uh, they had these jet packs on sale. Regularly, 150 bucks, I think it was. I'm not sure, but I paid 50 bucks for it. And basically, I think I reviewed this once. It works great. Uh, what this is for is it's, it's, it's a MiFi device. And what it does is it actually, uh, you turn this on, and it actually allows up to seven different phones or uh, Wi-Fi devices to connect to this. And it gives, it gives out a great Wi-Fi signal. So if you're in a hotel and you don't want to pay 15 bucks a day for Internet service, I can just use this. Uh, if I want the friends in my room to use the laptop or use whatever else, or if I'm on a broadcast booth at CES and internet connections are tough to get there, I just turn this on, put it in my pocket, leave it on the desk, whatever, and I get signal. And it works. Again, there's just no problems with it. It's username and passworded and uh, very safe, very efficient. couple questions, I know. Why would I want to use this and not tether off my phone uh, to get the Wi-Fi, which you can do. A, you have to pay a little bit extra for it. And B, what I don't like is it sucks the battery life out of the phone quickly. So if I'm going to be tethering Internet on this, Wi-Fi, if you will, uh, the battery's going to drain real quick. So if you plug it in, you're okay. If not, you're not going to be happy because it's just going to reduce all the juice. Henceforth, you will use this, and uh, it's great. Now, I was told, and I wrote it down because I was taking notes, and my daughter was taking notes, 10 bucks a month, that's how much this costs to have it going. It has its own phone number on it, essentially, and that's how it is able to give you uh, the Verizon service. Uh, it's a phone number. You don't dial it, but this has a phone number which actually hits the satellites, and it recognizes it, and you get Wi-Fi. So uh, it was great. I used it at CES. It worked great. Now, here's, here, here, here's the part that drives me nuts. When we got the bill, uh, it turned out that this all of a sudden went from 10 bucks a month to 20 bucks a month, and I've had this for three months now so it's 30 bucks not that it's going to break the bank but it's 30 bucks that I had to pay for this that I was told and I have it in writing and my daughter has it in writing that it was 10 bucks a month and when we got the bill it was 20 bucks a month so that was aggravating issue number one 
aggravating issue number two is that uh, they overcharged us for the amount of data that we had. We actually signed a plan for 10 gigabytes. Uh, they were giving us 15, which we didn't use, and we were paying for that. So uh, I had to excuse myself because I didn't want to go berserk. I didn't want to get arrested. It's, not, it's bad publicity. So I kind of just let it at that, and my daughter took care of it. And uh, everything is fixed, but they refuse to uh, give us the $30 credit back that they absolutely overcharged for this. And I was so annoyed with them, I would use other words, but I canceled the service on this. I don't want it now. I'm not using the service. Uh, the beauty of this is that if I'm going away or know I'll need this, it's going to cost me 20 bucks now for the month to have this up and operating. So as I need it, I'll use it, but... I feel ripped off because I bought this and I was told it was 10 bucks a month and it was actually 20 bucks a month. So Verizon, I am not the first person you've done this to. Uh, I've spoke to my cousin. Uh, they were charging him for uh, overcharging him for a plan where he could have they have plans available that were substantially lower than what he was paying. They never told him. They kept charging. Actually, it was about, I believe, three times what he was paying. And then one day he was talking to someone who saw an ad and said, wait a minute. I'm not even getting this much, and I'm paying three times. And he called them up, and they said, oh, yeah, you could change your plan to this. Meanwhile, uh, he had six months where he was overpaying, and it was considerable. It was like 50 60 bucks a month. They refused to give him a rebate. They changed his plan. So what I'm telling everybody, no matter what your phone company is for your smartphone, two things. One, check that bill. Check that bill every month. And two, keep checking to see what sales they're running, what new programs are running, and you have to be the person that takes the initiative to change the plan to get that money savings. Believe me, Verizon will not tell you. You've got to pry it out of them, and I do mean pry it out of them. So uh, I can go on for a while, but this is a rant, and I went overboard. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the moment you've been waiting for, and today we are going to go to the gadget of the day, and the gadget of the day is actually right here. We'll take a close-up of this on camera two real quick. It is, there it is, you can kind of see that, yeah. So now we'll put it back on my laptop, and this is a Logitech webcam. It's the Model C920, and this is actually refurbished. I just got it. I just, when I came into the studio, I tried it out just before I went on air because uh, I've been in a rush today, and I needed to get in the studio. So here I am. And uh, I plugged the camera in, and this is refurbished. Now, I know a lot of people freak out when they buy refurbished goods. I buy them frequently, and the trick of it is they work 99.9% .9 of the time. If you have a problem, you'll know right off the bat you return it. Obviously, you got to read what the warranty is, but this was warrantied for uh, 90 days. So I wanted to upgrade. I have a 720 camera, 720p. I figured... This was on sale for 49 bucks refurbished. Regularly, I think it's 150 bucks. Probably street price is maybe 110, somewhere around there. So, basically, uh, what this webcam does is it's fast, it's smooth, it's full HD, 8, uh, 1080p video. Uh, it has H.264 AVC compression. Uh, it has HD 720p video call quality if skype is not your favorite video call service the c920 delivers hd 720 calling on most major instant messengers because they don't handle 1080p uh, so if you're doing a video of yourself or doing a podcast or something like that you can actually connect in 1080p uh, this mentions that it has full 1080p recording on devices in widescreen uh, at 30 frames per second the faster the frame rate, the normal frame rate is 30 frames. Some of them only go to 25, some of them only go to 20. But if you start dropping frames, things be get a little choppy. So this will do the full 30 frames, which is what I want. This has sharp, rich colors. It has autofocus, which I think is a must. Uh, it has a great Carl Zeiss lens, which are my favorite lens. It has stereo audio uh, on both sides of the camera. Uh, there is a, let's see if we can get two on that. You'll see on the left and right side, you have a microphone. So it's actually a stereo microphone that's built into the device. 
You can't see it, but it lights up blue when it's turned on. It has a 15 megapixel snapshot capability, so you could use this for stills uh, for pretty much anything you hold in front of it. You can take stills and add 15 megapixels. That's pretty good. And it also has something that I haven't seen on a lot of cameras, and I really like it. But right here, and I'll have to go to camera two, but right there, uh, right where my finger is, is a tripod mount. So that's kind of neat. The other thing that I liked about this particular camera is that uh, you can actually put this uh, on a table and because of the lever essentially that's on it, you can put it on the table and point it up to you. And I'll point that out in a second. So it automatically uh, loads the driver. That took a couple seconds and it worked perfectly fine. And then uh, you have software that comes with it. Uh, but this refurbished model came with nothing other than the camera. No directions, no packaging. It was in a white plastic bag with nothing else in it. So you just go to the website, Logitech's website. You put in a, uh, the uh, name of the camera, which is a um, C920, and you go to a software download, and I download the software. Now let's take a look at the software that I downloaded. So that's a picture of me uh, right now. Here I am in front of the camera. And uh, I can move this up or down, and uh, that's at 1080p, and uh, it, it works pretty good. It had some neat controls on it. Uh, you were able to, uh, to go right and left uh, with this camera. Uh, up and down, it would move a little, not a lot, but it, it did work. It has the right sound, which means it automatically adjusts to the uh, sound in the room, which means you don't have to be turning the volume controls. Uh, it also has the right light, right light feature, which is uh, it adjusts for whatever the lighting conditions are. You never have to touch the camera, which is nice. So I'm going to take this off, and uh, I'm actually going to put this on the table now, and uh, I'm just going to tilt this up, and uh, you will see that uh, there I am. That's the ceiling up here, and I'll just hold the camera and kind of show you around the studio a little bit. Uh, that's my teleprompter monitor and behind there there's a glass window where, where wild man Mike is you can't see him but he's there I think he's kind of waving I don't know but the control room is back there with all the gear and equipment and then we have uh, uh, a ton of computers all over the place here and uh, uh, we have crazy lights uh, let's see if we can get those in here I'm sorry for the jerkiness of the camera but uh, it is what it is but uh, we have all kinds of gear here and uh, that's kind of it so uh, this is an excellent camera. It does everything uh, that it says it will do. Uh, I have no complaints with it whatsoever. Logitech always makes a good camera, and I've used them consistently for the last probably six or seven years. Uh, they're light. They're portable. They hold up under all kinds of uh, uh, conditions, and they work real well. And uh, as I recall now, Skype is, the new Skype is actually doing 1080p. Now that I'm thinking about it, Skype is doing 1080p. So uh, that will wrap it up today for the Gadget Professor. I hope you enjoyed the show. I enjoyed bringing it to you. And uh, I will talk to everybody next Thursday. And uh, we got some surprises coming up. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that uh, I'm going to be involved with at NAB. And I can't tell you much more than that. But I will tell you that I will be broadcasting probably six to eight hours a day every day at NAB at various locations and uh, we'll fill you in a little bit more uh, on that adventure coming up in April. Thank you so much for tuning in. So long from The Gadget Professor. The Gadget Professor is produced by Don Bain. Multimedia Communications, LLC. If you would like your product reviewed on The Gadget Professor or would like to appear on The Gadget Professor, contact us via email at thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com. The opinions expressed on the program by the host, guests, call-in listeners, or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. And thank you for watching The Gadget Professor.